गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स लेट्स कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन अबाउट एल आर यू कैश सो इन द प्रीवियस टू वीडियोज वी केम अप विथ टू सोल्यूशन द फर्स्ट सोल्यूशन वॉज टू यूज लिंक हैश मैप इन विच वी यूज द ए पी आई फ्रॉम जाओ ए पी आई मेथड इन साइड द लिंक हैश मैप टू क्रिएट अवर एल आर यू कैश एंड इन द फॉलो ऑफ वीडियो वी क्रिएटेड आवर ओन एल आर यू कैश बाई फॉलोइंग दिस एल्गोरिथम एंड यूजिंग डब्ल्यू लिंक लिस्ट एंड कस्टम हैश मैप so these were the two uh, things that we have discussed already in the previous video so again let's to recap it very quickly so we had this interface custom hash table in which we have got a key and value generic pairs uh, in which we have got uh, the very common methods of cache which is get put and remove so our first implementation was using the link hash map where we relied on this uh, constructor in which we ma uh, we marked this access order as true which means that it would be based on that which uh, which uh, element was accessed uh, the first and it will follow an access order if you mark it as false then it will be following a insertion order the default insertion order and this is the main method which uh, which which actually implements that whenever uh, uh, the lru entry which is uh, the eldest entry that should be removed whenever the size of this map exceeds the capacity because we have to evict one element to uh, create a space for the new element so using this constructor i mean we are we just leverage on this uh, api uh, methods uh, to implement our lru cache the next one was to use a w link list and a hash table for the hash table i just used uh, uh, again the hash map but uh, for the w link list i created my own custom link list node in which we have got the next and previous links and the common key value pair and the algorithm uh, we discussed in in details in the previous video was this that whenever we are inserting or getting the value or finding the least recently used and all and the eviction logic so all this uh, for algorithm was followed up in that algorithm i mean you can watch the previous video for all the details so in this video we are going to see how to test this because one of the things that we have to which is i found that most of the students like face it space is tricky is that if we have got a concurrent code it's a little bit difficult to actually write a unit test so in this video we will learn how to do it so i have already got my test class um, done so this is this is the test class which is uh, based on our custom implementation where we are using our own w link list and a uh, custom hash map concurrent hash map and then we have implemented it using those uh, four steps in our lru cache algorithm that we discussed so in this uh, let's go through it so first of all we have got this our interface uh, lru cache this is our uh, basic interface in which uh, based on which we have got two uh, classes to implement it so we have created this as our uh, main lru cache and here in the setup method i am calling the constructor in which i am defining the capacity that uh, how much uh, what is the capacity of 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 my lru cache that i am using so once this is done i mean in the setup uh, then we are we are actually doing all this first three uh, checks are for the pre conditions that Uh, our lru cache will not support any key entry i mean if you are using the key uh, as a null or we are trying to put the key as a null or we are trying to remove a uh, key as a null all this will throw an exception this is what we have implemented in our uh, get method and all so we, you can see that in in the get method uh, we are making a guard first i mean in all the methods we are because this is need, uh, this needs to be thread safe that's why we, we are guarding all the get put and remove methods by our read write lock so uh, for the precondition every time when we are pass a null we are th throwing an exception illegal argument exception that key must not be null the same is there in the put if you are putting key or value as null it should throw exception similarly for remove if you are passing the key as null then it should throw this exception i think this is a very good uh, like a clean code design that uh, we should always uh, check for the preconditions about the arguments that are being passed to our methods so we should always have some prerequisites that uh, this should be uh, meeting some condition so this first three method unit test is uh, we are just testing the same so here we are throwing this assert throws and whenever we call call this uh, method uh, it should uh, throw this exception and then we are checking the message uh, whether it is correct or not and we are also checking as exactly same exception class the illegal argument exception class now uh, once we have tested all this i think this is the main basic feature of our lru cache that it should work the way lru should be there that whenever the capacity uh, is uh, reached to a limit i mean uh, whenever the size the total, the total size of uh, or the total number of elements in our lru cache 
it's uh, exceeding the capacity and we have to place a new entry then we have to evict or remove the oldest entry this is the basic lru cache algorithm so this is what we're testing today so let's go through it uh, that first of all we are creating this lru cache only with capacity 2 in the setup method by default we're getting five but just to make it easy to understand i'm making the capacity of two only it means that only two elements uh, can be added to the to our lru cache and whenever a third element is being added the least recently used all the oldest entry should be removed and only then the third entry could, could be uh, could be placed in our lru cache so this is what the algorithm is so for example here when we put one and then we put two so our cache is looking like this the key is one with the value as one and two as two up till this point we have already reached the capacity of two now we can assert that say just uh, whenever we want to get the value of one then we expect the value the value of one with key as string one well but once, once we call this get method right in that, in that case our most recently used is this element which makes this and this entry two and two as the oldest entry now if because our LRU key is not two, because we just call this get method on one. So one becomes the most recently used and two becomes the least recently used. In that case, now if we want to put the third element, because the, now we already have got the capacity of uh, two, it means that the oldest entry two would be evicted or removed. That's why when once we call this put and then we assert uh, on the, uh, because we don't have any entry now because two has already been removed, it would be asserting to null because there's no entry for two in our LRU cache. This is a very simple, but very uh, easy way to understand our whole LRU functionality, but just by using two elements. Now, again, uh, we just move some for some further checks. Now, suppose, now after this point, right, we have already removed two. Now, three becomes the most recently used and one becomes the least recently used. So that's why when LRU key is one, again, if you try to like put the fourth element, is, a, is a, again the same check as we did for three. Now we again enter and uh, put a new entry. In that case, our uh, one would be evicted. Now, if we just uh, now we have got two elements in our uh, in our this, which is four, which is the most recently used, and three is the least recently used. So it's just a normal check that whenever we we are getting the values. It, uh, so at this point, three will become the most recently used, and four will become the least recently used because now we are calling a get operation. Whenever you call any operation or get or something or put or something, then uh, that element becomes the most recently used. And whatever elements are left, which are not being accessed for any of these methods, that becomes the least recently used. So after this operation, our most recently used is three and least LRU is four. And after this element, again, the four again becomes the most recently used and three becomes the least recently used. So this is all about very simple uh, uh, I mean, uh, test uh, to, act, uh, to actually check all our behavior for the LRU cache. Now let's test the most important part, which is uh, whether our uh, LRU cache is thread safe or not. Again, let's go back to our implementation. So here we are actually uh, relying on a read write lock, as I mentioned before. This read write lock, uh, the concrete class uh, which implements this is re entrant read write lock. And uh, the data structure that we are using is a uh, linked uh, list node, I mean, uh, which behaves as a doubly linked list in which we have got the, each node has got access to the previous element and the next element. And for the hash table, uh, where we are showing the key value pairs, for that I'm using concurrent hash map, but I think uh, this is an overhead. We can remove uh, concurrency part because we are already guarding all our three methods, get, put, and remove by this re read log. Okay, so I will change it later on. Uh, let's go through it. Our, uh, uh, thread safe part whenever they are using get right get is always the read operation in that case we only need the read lock this is where i'm calling this at the start of the method and as soon as this uh, method ends i'm putting in the finally block so even though there's any exception thrown still it will be able to uh, exit uh, to uh, relieve this lock this is a very important step that's why we have to always put in try and finally now for put and remove, right? Because these are the right operations, which means that they are going to manipulate uh, the LRU cache. That's why we have to use write lock. This is what, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm guarding it at the, at the very first entrance of this put method. And after that, once we are done, we are putting in the final block to release it. Again, the same the same logic is here that if any exception is thrown in any of this try, try block, still we should be able to release this lock. Otherwise, this lock would be held forever. 
and it can result in a resource leak and uh, bad performance of this of our application. Similarly, for remove, it causes removes again manipulating a LRU cache. We are deleting some entry if possible. So in that case also, we have to write lock uh, first, and then finally, finally we have to release this. Now to test this, uh, whenever we are trying to test any type of multi-threaded code, always it's advisable to uh, to first of all put all those entries like for example get put and remove everything we can put uh, into uh, test that part into uh, say some uh, by by multiple threads so and after that uh, at the end we assert that all the entries all the entries in our uh, data structure or whatever logic we are testing in the multi thread code that is correct uh, as per the need of the code so here uh, what i'm doing is that because we claim that our uh, LRU cache is thread safe. So what I will do is that I will try to uh, manipulate this uh, manipulate this LRU cache or uh, to have some right entry. This is the right entry. I'm going to put a lot of keys here by multiple threads. Once I do this operation, when I am trying to put multiple values uh, by multiple threads by using this thread pool, after that, once this is done, then we will assert that in our LRU cache, the entries are same as expected. The same logic you can apply to any type of uh, threading testing. For whatever data structure or whatever the block of code you're testing, try to execute the same uh, do a lot of operations on that block of code or on that data structure by multiple threads. And after that, try to test uh, uh, to assert it, whatever the values that you're expecting uh, in, that, in that data structure or, or uh, the result of that block, block of code that should be asserting to a certain value. This is the, okay. So this is uh, about the generic, generic logic. Now let's see how we have done it here. So first of all, I've created a size of 50, which would be uh, the 50, uh, the capacity of our LRU cache. And I'm going to use five threads in my flex, uh, in my thread pool. And I'm using a countdown latch. This is important because I want to uh, see that all the 50 entries are being put into LRU cache. And after the, each of the entry, I mean, uh, there's a countdown. And once we are able to uh, put by five threads, by the thread, uh, thread pool of five threads, it must we are able to enter 50 entries into our LRU cache. And until then, it will await here. Only when this is uh, countdown is called 50 times, this is what we call like 50 times, only then uh, uh, this countdown will be, will be done. And then this await, then our main thread, which is uh, running this unit test, it will move to the next step after this, which is to shut down our extra service. So when this after this after this point we are sure that our uh, our uh, countdown thread ha latch has been uh, has been done and it has gone down for 50 times which means that we are able to put 50 entries into our LRU cache by five threads and this is the main thread the main line main part that after we have done this we need to assure that ensure that uh, all this like five threads have been done uh, in in a thread safe way and that's why we can assert it that whatever the value 50 times uh, the value that we have put it is same as this uh, value and uh, the key that we are going to put okay now let's go to the exact logic uh, here so here what i'm doing is that i created the in stream uh, range of zero of size and then i'm mapping this object uh, from key i mean i mean the the integer key the primitive integer key to the object key because we can only place uh, an object integer object wrapper object inside the inside the collection in, in java so this is my new key which I'm creating. The key should could be like value, like value zero, value one, value two, up till value forty nine, right? And uh, just to make that, uh, just to see that what's happening inside this thread. I mean, just to ensure that uh, it is being uh, accessed by multiple threads inside this thread pool. There are five threads there. So that's why I'm printing the current thread name, the new queue value which I'm going to put in the LRU cache as a key. That is value zero, value one, value two, up till value forty nine, I think. Uh, and then finally, uh, this key. Key is actually, uh, the name is key, but it's actually put as a value. So in our LRU cache, uh, the new key value and all, this would be marked as a key as a string. The value would be the exact integer key in the wrapper object. So, okay. So this is done. And then uh, as mentioned that we will uh, count on it 50 times until, uh, and then await here. This is all about this method. And uh, once we, we are done with this, we will shut it down and then we will assert it. So let's run all these test cases. And then uh, first of all, I will learn this test case and, and, show, and see that what's going on. Just click on this run button. Also, you can use Control Shift F10 uh, as a shortcut key. Okay, so 
Now let's uh, our uh, assertion is correct, which means that we are able to put 50 entries. Let me put it a little bit down. Uh, so here, this assertion is is doing well, which means that for all the associated keys, uh, we are going we are having this value uh, as a, equal to the key of that object. So this is what we are asserting. Okay, the i, the x is on zero. The value zero is there. Uh, I mean, when we call this get with value zero, we have got the exact value as zero itself. This is what we are putting it here, right? Similarly, for value one, because and for the value one entry, it, it would be something like this: value one, and the and the uh, exact value would be one. So this is the key and value pair. Similarly, we will have value two, s two, value three, s three, and all. This is what we are setting here, because our test is correct now. It means that it's all working correct. And as I mentioned, that I have put the system dot print app where we are printing the thread name uh, and then that's what's going inside this. So these are, as we mentioned, there are five threads. That's why uh, this is the default name of our current thread. That thread pool, uh, pool. There's only one pool, thread pool, and then we have got thread one, thread two, thread three, thread four, five like this. We can see all these five threads in in here in this first thread. So the second thread from the thread thread pool, it put the value of one with value one, right? Then value zero with value zero, and so on until we are able to complete for all 49 uh, 49 plus 0 is 50 so we are able to put the last entry here by the second thread and once this all this entry is done then in that case we are able to uh, uh, move out of this countdown dot await and uh, shut down the service now we are uh, as we mentioned uh, before that uh, this all our test cases are working i mean we can run all the test cases again and see whether it's all working or not but here uh, this one further uh, i mean a uh, refactor we can do as I mentioned that we have already uh, we are using this hash table as concurrent hash map, but we don't need concurrent hash map, right? Because all our get put and remove methods are already thread safe uh, or already guarded by this read write lock. So I will just remove this concurrent hash map limited part and just choose a normal hash map, right? This will slightly improve the performance because there is an overhead in the concurrent hash map to uh, maintain the thread safety, right? So if I just use a plain hash map, it would be slightly uh, better in performance because it's already set safe by this uh, read write lock. Now, once we do, once we do this again, let me run this test case uh, just directly from here. So we have said, we, we assume that even the we have marked from concurrent hash map to hash map, it should uh, still work. Okay, so this is working correctly as expected. Okay, so, so again, let me uh, first last time run all the test cases which includes all those uh, previous nail checks and uh, as well as all this so we can see here all our test methods are working fine guys i'm just uh, just using the java unit 5 and i really like this display name and all those uh, extra features for example asserting assert throwing uh, any type of exception i think the, uh, the paradigm which is being used here using java lambdas and all which is is quite uh, good and easy I strongly suggest you to use JUnit 5 uh, in your all your code, which is, uh, I think, is very, very, very nicely written. And it helps us to write a lot of uh, sophisticated unit test cases. And also, you can see that discipline in a mall. I can just name whatever way I want to uh, create my methods name to look into. Okay, so guys, this was all about LRU cache. We uh, have gone through uh, uh, both, uh, both, the, uh, both the LRU uh, linked hash map implementation as well as our own custom implementation and also wrote some test cases uh, for both the simple cases, LRU cache and multi-thread cases. In the next video, we will see how to uh, write a fixed log parser. This is a very common uh, problem I have seen uh, across uh, some of the hash funds. Uh, uh, so in the next video, just uh, stay tuned and we will look into details about the fixed log parser and we also touch regex part, how to use the regex correctly. So see you all in the next video.